Shall we turn to the Word of God together as we celebrate Easter today? And I've got another hour and a half just to share with you the meaning of Easter. Thank you, Tom. Brilliant. And uh, if you have a Bible with you, you can turn to either Luke 9.22, and I'm also going to read Matthew 28.1 through to 9. Luke 9.22, and he said, this is Jesus speaking, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. And then over in Matthew, we read these words, verses 1 to 9. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Now that's good advice. You know, sometimes people will say, when I see an angel one day, I wonder if he'll have to say to me, do not be afraid. If an angel appeared to me, the first words he'd have to say to me would be, come back. Because I would be afraid. Something like, like this heavenly creature appears, and you often read that angels say, do not be afraid. And he says, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Now I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Easter is brilliant, isn't it? Only God could think of Easter. Only God could think of this, to actually send his own son, his one and only son, to die a horrible death. And and actually, the method of death was not important because, as Gareth reminded us on Good Friday, what was important was the resurrection of Jesus Christ because every leader that has ever lived through history has died. Every single leader has died. Every religious leader, every pontiff, everyone that does want to set themselves up, even dictators, die. And Jesus died, but three days later, he rose from the dead. And so the resurrection of Jesus means that we have some powerful faith to build on, not just wishful thinking. It's a pivotal point in history. At this moment, history changed. The world changed. Everything from the moment that that stone rolled away and the empty tomb was revealed, everything changed. Nothing would ever be the same again. Of course, you and I don't fully appreciate that because we weren't around in those days. We were around that time. We've lived in a world that has been Christianized, where the name of Jesus has been known. But I want to submit to you today that because he did, because he died, we can know certain things. Because of what he did, we can know certain things. And and some of the things that we can know, I'm going to just call the we can statements of Easter.